Golly, I saw it. If you, I, I could be a witness. Well, um, I told the guys in the locker room that when they go back to their apartment, they need to get on their knees and thank the good Lord um, because he's the one that did this. It wasn't us, the staff, the players. It was, for some reason, he shined favor on us in overtime. And uh, so we're, we're blessed. It is a blessing. I, I love our guys. I, I mean, it's a tale of two halves. And, but for you guys, you're probably thinking, yeah, those, those are the cats we thought they could be at sometimes we've seen glimpse of it and then the second half he said yeah those are cats we've seen a whole bunch of this year too so but for West Virginia um, they're a team that they can beat anybody in our conference at, at any place home or on the road uh, because they're so talented and uh, Josh just hadn't had his whole team together and so we saw a tale of two halves with them a half where they were not focused, not as motivated or whatever it was. And then the second half, when they looked like the team that everybody projected them to be at the, the start of the year. So blessed, thankful for the win, thankful for our students who showed up. Um, Got to have a talk with professors who have exams on game nights and see if we can do something about that. But uh, I just want to put a challenge out to our students. Uh, they, they, they text me, they, they hit me on Instagram, ask me to repost things, to come by their sororities and fraternities and have dinner and speak, and, and we show up. We do that. And uh, when we have a home game, I need them to show up, right? They're, they're a 10 to 15 point advantage when we have the five to 7,000 in there, and it makes a difference. And we hadn't had it the last couple games, and uh, blessed that we were able to, to get the wins. But if we're going to win the next home game, uh, we need them to show up. So, take questions. Who wants to start? D. Scott. Coach uh, Todd. Ty... Kelly? What's up, bro? <laughs> 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 Coach Todd, uh, <laughs> Tyler was in here talking about emptying the tank. And what I'm curious about is he's scored 20 plus in four of the last eight games. How have you seen him empty the tank here down the stretch? Man, uh, we're asking a lot of him, and uh, and he's 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 delivering, and and he he's he's playing, he's studying, he's practicing, he's preparing like a kid who wants to make the NCAA tournament for the first time in his career, and so I mean. It, we're asking, we're stretching him, man. He's be really being stretched, and, and he's embracing it. And uh, you know, he asked me the other day, "Am I was I on Marquise Noel as much as I am on him?" And the answer is, I was on Keese a whole lot more, uh, by the way. And uh, but but he's he's just embracing being coached and and trying to do whatever he can, uh, leaving it all on the court for his team. And what can you say about his performance tonight with 28, 29 points? Yeah, no, it was. Uh, I mean, not just the points, but, you know, the six assists, you know, the four rebounds, you know, I just and then the clutch free throws down the stretch. Like, we knew at the end of the game that um, if we let him shoot a three, it looked like everything was going in, so it didn't make any sense. Most uh, rule of thumb is six or less seconds, then you foul up three. And I was like, forget that crap. I ain't letting them. I mean, every time I looked up, Raekwon Battle was hitting a three, and so – we was just going to foul, and, and I thought, you know, tough guys make free throws at the end of games. It doesn't matter what your shooting percentage is. And I, I knew that we could foul them, and even if they made both, we were going to make two on the other end. Uh, what do you think was at fault for blowing the lead in the second half? Was it a lack of intensity? Uh, did West Virginia just play way better? How would you describe uh, it? Well, they shot 50%, um, 69% from three and uh, 
whereas in the first half they were 16% from three and 33% uh, from two. So um, credit goes to West Virginia. Um, we're going to have to look at it as a staff and figure out some things we could have done differently. Um, there, was, there was a time there where I thought we were playing not to lose and we got a little tight and, you know, whether it was my play calls or, you know, just our, our demeanor in the huddles, you know, I, you know, I'll have to look at all of that. But, you know, I was thankful we got it to overtime and, and I like to look in their eyes when the buzzer sounded. We knew we were going to overtime. Uh, I was looking at guys that knew they were going to win. And how exciting was it for you to see some threes finally go in in that first half? <laughs> Man, last couple games, it's been, it's been nice. And uh, the guys are buying into what we need them to do and, and shoot the shots we want them to shoot. And, uh, and I know if they shoot those, uh, that we got a good chance of making them. Uh, with Dady in the starting lineup, uh, having another guy with some point guard skills, has that maybe helped free up uh, TP a little bit to sometimes play off the ball and get some some looks yeah no it, it, it's it has they done a great job uh, being another ball handler and uh, allowing us to do some different things with tp and then um you know both cam art all, all the guys have done a good job of, of finding him when he's open and he's done a good job of taking the shots even if they're semi-contested like i think our our shooting percentage uncontested three is in the 40s our shooting percentage contested threes is uh 33.4 which equates to 50 percent from two so i'd rather you shoot a 50 percent shot even if it's contested than you know shoot it off the dribble because you know off the dribble it drops way down and um so yeah like our guys have a they're, they're figuring out the type of shots we need to take when you get to overtime now are you thinking this is over. <laughs> I mean, it's what twelve in a row now for you. Yeah, I don't. I don't think about the in a row stuff because then you start thinking, well, eventually the numbers, you know, the percentages are gonna kick in. So we just treat it all as it's just one overtime, just like it's one game. And uh, I mean, we we did Shark Week so that we can play as many extra five minutes as as a put up on the clock. Um, <clears throat> after after the Texas game, you, you noticed that the guys were getting better, and then after that, you've won one two straight. Have you noticed over this last two weeks or so a, a, a greater focus or, or or something that has kind of led to uh, more success? Well, um, it, there's there's two parts to that. Um, Number one is our staff did an unbelievable job of simplifying and identifying what we could improve on that would give us just a little extra that we needed to put us over the hump. Because those one possession games, there's not a, a lot and, and we don't have time to change a lot, but we can focus in on one or two things that would put us over the top. And so I give my staff credit for that. And then our players have bought in to the things we needed to improve on the little things that, 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 that just needed to change. It was just one or two things and they bought into it and they're holding each other accountable to it. And so, um, you know, like we didn't, we weren't far off in those other games, you know, and, uh, and so it's just, uh, but we can't go back and do anything about it. So now it's just pulling the box. This one's in the box. Time to start getting ready for Cincinnati. And is there a guy in, in the country that you would rather never see Again, than, than Raekwon battle. <laughs> no, yes, I, I, yeah, I'm, I don't want to see Raekwon battle anymore. <laughs> He's, uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, uh, like last year in the tournament. I mean, he just rose up and made tough shots, and then he's just got this ability to not, like, the, the contest doesn't bother him. Like, he might shoot better contested. I, I don't know. I got to look at the numbers, but. Man, every time he, he'd jump 40 inches off the ground, our hands would be up and the ball being there, and I'm, it's going in. It's going in. So it was, he was one of them guys you couldn't let him get shots, and they did a great job. Uh, Josh ran some really good stuff that we couldn't deny him the ball, and then he rose up and made shots. You guys had just six offensive rebounds against BYU on Saturday, 15 tonight. How important was that? Well, everything mattered tonight. You know, and, and some games, 
you got an offensive rebound and that, that gets you over the hump. And some games it's, you know, we only had 13 turnovers against BYU, but tonight we had more offensive rebounds and more turnovers. So you got to, I, I, this group, they just figure out a way, man. Whatever it is, they figure out a way. And, um, you know, offensive rebounding, um, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know how, yeah, we, we were close on it. So it was, it was pretty good. I. You know, every possession mattered. And over time, I was so proud of David, right? Like, Dave got some big-time, tough rebounds, two hands in traffic. And, yeah, I was, was really, really proud of him. Uh, Raekwon didn't get a shot off with, in the last three minutes of regulation, the first three minutes of overtime. Was there a specific defensive shift that caused that? Um, man, that was pretty good. Uh, I didn't. I didn't notice that. I have to go back and look and figure that one out. Thank you, guys.